I'm here with Frank Seaman, who is a prosthodontist from Colorado, right. US. Now, a prosthodontist is someone who makes dentures, crowns, bridges. Um, now, I'm presuming, Frank, you wouldn't be placing implants. You would have someone else placing Correct. implants. Correct. I'd be surgeon. A surgeon. Yeah. Yeah. So you would have a surgeon placing implants, and then you would place the, whatever it is on top of the implant, the crown or bridge on top the of the palm. prosthetic implant. device. Now, Frank, tell me a little bit. What brings you to England? What brings you? So Frank is taking a Buteco course with Patrick McEwen and wanted to pop in and say hello. What brought you to the UK? Uh, to attend a, a second course with Patrick. Uh, Why? To, uh, to learn uh, better so I can educate my, my patients with uh, better breathing habits uh, primarily. And it involves uh, closing the lips, breathing through the nose, and also proper tongue position. And they all work together. Cool. Now, tell me, why is someone who spends an element of their time making dentures for people, I presume these are people, some of your patients have no teeth. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And now you're telling people with no teeth. I am. Yeah, <laughs> why? Uh, well, it, it impacts a lot of dental problems of which I am faced with every day. Uh, mouth, mouth breathing does. It, number one, it dries out the mucosal tissue and leaves a residual film of, of sticky substance, which then attracts a lot of bacteria and causes a bad breath, among other things, dental decay, swollen gums, a swollen uh, gingival tissue, and inflammation in the mouth in, in general. It also induces the urge to clinch and grind their teeth at nighttime. And uh, through the, the process of an apnea, sleep apnea process, part of the arousal process is teeth clinching and jaw muscle activity, which causes teeth clinching grinding, of which I deal a lot with worn and broken down teeth uh, from just mechanical insult. And so I find that I can have them close their lips at nighttime and breathe through their nose. They're keeping their mucosal tissue moist and also dialing down the incidence of uh, teeth grinding jaw muscle, extra, extracurricular jaw muscle activity uh, during sleep. And that helps me to render better, better dental, long-lasting uh, dental services for them that last longer, has, has a lot less breakdown problems for them over the long term. So it's, I consider it more preventive in nature and, and helps my dentistry work better for them. Cool. So now, Frank, tell me what, what the business end of this, what are you actually doing? So how do you help people to change? I mean, I'm teaching much younger people. Right. Than you are. Right. Now I am. I, I have a following of people who are older. Right. Now I'm trying to extend my treatment. I've extended very nicely up to about 16, 17, what 18. And now my mission, and I've had some good results, up to 30. But clearly, 30 would be relatively young for your patients. Yes, it would. We so, do see them, but not that frequently. Wonderful. So people watching videos such as this, they want to make themselves better. Right. So what are your tips? for people to make themselves better? I first have to bring their awareness to the problem. Cool. Yep. I, I do screening, written screening cool. forms. We, we, to, we move forward because we're assuming okay. people are watching this right. gained awareness. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I, I first identify the problem and say, okay, I use snores. It, that's, a, that's a problem. Do you notice it? Do your parents notice it? Whatever. Yeah. And identify something that they can tag on with to want to improve or change. Okay. Uh, and so then I, I see... Because you have to identify need for them to change. Right, right. Cool, that's fine. And then I, I, I tell them the only way they're going to do that is to stop breathing through their mouth during sleep. Yeah. And they say, well, I, I don't, you know. So I said, okay, for those that are insistent that they don't breathe through their mouth during sleep, I can test them with a, a more sophisticated high-resolution pulse oximetry testing this is a home one they do, yes. or they have to go to the doctor's? No, uh, they, they, we have a device in the office. That uh, they can take home they with can them? They can take home. Okay, home. okay. What's, what's that device? It's uh, Mamelta 300i, my product name, uh, and it's uh, very good. In the States, it sells for about $1,000 a, a unit, so it's rather expensive, and so... But, but it's, it's the type really, of thing, you know, I could have in-house if I wanted oh yeah, to. Oh I yeah. could, you know, yeah. test people. And, yeah, we, we give it to, I have eight, eight units in my office. and they pay, pay, You're going some. Yeah, patients take them home and say, okay, you're, you're doubtful. And I, I, I can see 
problems in your mouth suggesting that you do breathe through your mouth. And so I need to have you understand that you You need do. to get the data in and demonstrate yeah. to them. And so I have comparative tests. And so I do one night, just whatever they're doing, take the pulse ox, and it records data all night long, every three seconds, and then prints it out on the computer in the morning. Cool. It, okay. Well, I'm going to jump forward here, Frank. So we've diagnosed someone as having an issue. We've convinced them they need to do something about it. Right, right. Now what we're going to do, what's your program for making people change? Okay, well, I, I show them the data. I, I do comparatives. One night, just whatever they do, <coughs> breathing-wise, and one night only with tape on their lips. And I show them the comparative data, uh, looking at both of them, and ask them which data looks better. And it's intuitively obvious which one is, is better. 80% of the time, it's the one with tape on their lips. That are so that are so this is your mainstay initially is asking to use tape. But it's objective data that they can believe. Cool. Now, one of the things you mentioned to me and we discussed, if you've actually worked with 3M to develop a tape that people can put on their lips. Yes, I have. Do you want to show us that? Yeah, I will. Uh, so, uh, a lot of, many patients so, will comment. This is the tape that Frank's using. Yeah? Yes, it is. And can we get one out to show me? Sure. Yeah, or I'll take one out. Okay. And you, I'll, 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 let's not open too many of your cases here. So this is a piece of tape we have here. Wonderful. And could, should I put it on myself? Oh, of course. And the, yeah. the uh, tips curl down like the lips in a so, slip position. Uh, we have an open tab Ah, there. yeah. Good. Good. But, okay. Uh, so I take that off there, and I presume right. it's this bit I'm keeping. That, that, that's, no, that, that's, that's trash. That, oh, that's so... It's oh, okay. sticky on one side. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So and I've it got this down. It curls down, so I'm going to turn it this way up. Right, right. Yeah. And a lot of my patients would comment that it was too... That over the counter so we've got this here. Right. And that's, that's the right, right way around. Now and what do I do? You tuck your lips together. Normally? No. Purse them. Purse them together. Mm -hmm. And then... Put, put that in the middle first and kind of iron it out sideways, uh -huh. right? Right in the middle, uh -huh. yes, and then uh -huh. iron it out sideways yeah, and press it against the skin. And so right now, typically it went on dry lip skin because mouth breathing dries the lips out quite a bit. And uh, if you allow the saliva not to dry out by not breathing through the mouth, uh, it will now begin to moisten your lips, and that moistening effect also helps the, the glue of this mild adhesive uh, retain better during the overall night. Uh, many of the over-the-counter products uh, are, are really too sticky. A lot of my patients would not use the tape because it was just too sticky and painful with removal. So I worked with 3M to uh, use this a less adhesive tape, but it's highly effective with the skin of the lips, which is a a semi-moist skin, a transition skin, mm. different from dry skin. So, very mm. effective. And you can break through it if you really try, so it's not, not that restrictive. Yeah. And, uh, or you can use the tab to help pull it off. And so it's very, very, very user-friendly and easy to remove. Tab on left. Yeah. And the, the unfortunately, the glue doesn't stick night to night. It, it, uh, so you need a new one every yeah, night? Yeah, yeah. yeah Some one. people try it, but they find it falls off in the middle of the second yeah. night. Oh, I don't so. think, I would imagine it's a real, so what are you retailing these at? Uh, they're retailing in the States at $15 online. I sell them online. Lip Seal Tape is my product. Okay, name. Lip Seal Tape, if anyone's interested in that. Uh, right. That's your product, Frank. Right. Wonderful. Okay. I developed it really for my patients, and then it had such a demand, I started to put it online. And uh, Cool. Patrick. Now, what uh, what other things? So, the tape, yes, I, we, I, I agree. I do think tape's good. I think, you know, this is a slightly controversial issue when we're talking about young children. But we, this is a balance parents need to make because it's a decision. You need to make an informed choice for the balance of the available right, evidence. Right. What other things are you recommending people do? That once they have their lips closed, I can start working with their tongue. Mm -hmm. A lot of my patients have a low tongue position, which complicates yeah. sleep apnea problems and also teeth movement problems and tongue thrusting. Uh, swallowing from a, a, a low tongue position, it has a thrusting uh, capacity. So I think what's important to, work, or to point out here is that, Frank, you can't really make a lot of difference. You're not doing all the dotings. Correct. So you're not going to change, as you put it, you're not going to change the size of the box. Correct. Cool. I change the size of the box. That's what they why. do. That's what they do. <gasps> Uh, yes, some make it smaller. Yeah, I'm not particularly I happy with that. But, um, me, so I have a small box. Yeah, you have a small box. I have a medium-sized box. Um, 
Okay, so now, so Frank, we're going to, um, I, I'm making, bo- I'm changing the size of the box because you're not. I have to live with it. You I'm have to live with the box. So clearly this is going to res- resonate with a lot of people who are interested in what I'm saying because a lot of them aren't going to be able to get to an orthodontist. So aren't going to have a chance of me um, uh, changing the size of the box. Right. All right. So what are you going to help these people who can't get the size of their box changed? Okay, I, I, I have to have them be able to, I want to really get to the tongue. I want to get the tongue out of the roof, the floor of the mouth up on the palate again. And that'll open up the airway. I deal with a lot of my patients have sleep apnea issues. And snoring's a major one, and that's really considered mild obstructive sleep apnea. So it's a beginning launching pad for severe conditions. But So I got to get the tongue up, and I, I work with people with tongue, went to myofunctional therapy uh, uh, courses and learned about that. But it's really, I found it challenging with my patients uh, with poor results with dealing with the tongue to try to get it uh, up on the palate where it should be until I found out that really if I can get their lips closed first then it's a shorter reach for the tip of the tongue to go up on the palate and then overall with time the overall tongue up there and so I had to and then it was that improved compliance of tongue exercises of uh, which I have a standard one with my patients so, a lot of myofunctional therapy, tongue exercises. I boil it down to one that they would do consistently rather than 10 that they do sometimes. Yes, and, the best uh, exercise is the one you do. Yeah, yeah. And so it, it's really posturing the tip of the tongue on the anterior palate. And on the end spot. On the end spot. Yeah, I, we've, we've, I've done that before, good, but good. carry on. And, and then having the, the, the even young, like my three-year-old uh, grandson can do it, and he does it all the time. And then press up on that spot with the tip of the tongue and hold it up. That works the suspension muscles of the tongue, the extrinsic muscles of the tongue. So you're going basically asking them to push hard right. on the end spot right. with the tongue. That's right. when you go, no, 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 19 right. end spot. And you're going to push hard on the end spot for 10 seconds. 10 count seconds. of 10. Just count to 10 in your mind and then relax it a little bit. Do that again. And do 10 of those and that's one set. And I have them do five sets a day, especially right before they go to sleep. Yeah. And I say you're going to notice you're, you, you've been successful when you can go to sleep after that exercise with it, the tongue on the palate, and you can wake up that same position. Then you know that you, you mastered that, that habit. Yeah, I'm just normally waking up in the morning thinking what that noise is. <laughs> I said it for another 10 minutes snooze, but I will, I will be thinking about where my tongue is yeah. in the morning. But. Um, Okay, so Frank, any 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 other things? You have? What uh, what other things do you are you trying with your patients? Uh, or is that the main things? So you're mainly looking at the lip tape. You're looking at the um, what are we going to? What, what do we call this exercise? The end spot. The the end spot. Yeah. End spot pushes. Yeah, you know, I call them tongue push ups. Tongue push ups. So tongue. Yeah, well, this is yeah. Put oh, yeah, the tongue you, there in the palate and push up. And yeah, it's a tongue push, push up. up. Yeah, I think so I've, like I've heard the, the bicep, term. You know, you yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. you do a tongue. You're going to do a tongue push up, yeah. and you, I think people are going to get far more out of doing a tongue push up than they're ever going to do doing um, push ups. Anywhere doing push ups or um, or bench presses. Be much more healthy for them. Uh, much, yeah, yeah, and I think it'll going to get you farther than bench press. And you think how much people are doing bench presses? Yeah, yeah. You don't need any equipment for this. Right. Uh, you should have a tongue already. Yeah. Um, and then it'll help them get the tongue out of your mouth. Yeah. Without now, I, uh, Frank, so I, I talked a little bit earlier on about, I, I was just saying, my mealtime exercise, and I was interested, you said you sure. went to West Point yourself, I okay. and I uh, make the observation how people have had a military background tend to have, as you do, sir, a good I, body posture. I appreciate that. Yeah, a good body posture. So although you've got a small for box. Me, me now, yes. Yeah, well, it, it sets you in a good state. Exactly. It's muscle and tone. It's muscle tone. And I'm sure when you go and meet many of your peers from the same era right. that weren't in a military academies, right. you, would you say you look a lot younger than you? Uh, there's a, a fair, fair percentage of them that have retained. Uh, their youthful, more youthful look than, than than the average population. So the people who went to West Point right. have done better than average. Yeah, I go to reunions every five yeah. years, and and as a, as an overall average, looking at them versus people my age, I turn seventy next week, and so 
visiting a friend here in London. Respect, seventy-year-old <laughs> visiting a friend in London. Um, yeah, you know, and you, Frank, you, you, you know, you, you, you're, you're young and sprightly inside. Well, thank you. In spirit, and, and it helps. Uh, it really, why I got in the tape to begin with was to, to keep my mind alert. Yes. And yes. So I have noticed a tremendous improvement with mental alertness and and. Uh, not having a, you know, complications from breathing problems at night time from now. Yeah, breathing. and I think, you know, it, it's, I, I think this is important. I think it's fundamentally important. Yes. Yeah? Frank, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, pleasure well, meeting you. Pleasure. Um, do stay in touch. Well. And it's, you know, I would, I'd like to see, I will definitely trial out your, your, lip, your lip, the, 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 the lip seal tape. Yeah, I like your feedback. You know? Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.